there, Uncle Laurie here, back with another shave. It's Sunday here in central Victoria, or central western Victoria, or in Ballarat actually, if you want to look it up on the map. Um, and it's a, well, a bit of a dull, cloudy day. It's supposed to be spring, but we've still got a bit of winter left over. So it's more like winter than spring. <laughs> so what are we doing today? Well, we're going with Sterling September still. So we're using Scots Pine Sheep, which is a mutton tallow base soap. I'll, uh, I'll leave the um, ingredients and scent profile underneath underneath my chin <laughs> and for SE September as well I'm using the same razor all this week I've got the Hawk V version 2 with a fourth use Kai Captain Titan mild pink blade which has been working really well for me. And the brush we're going with to match the colour of Sterling, we've got this green DS Cosmetic handle with a Yaki, would you believe a Yaki knot? It's a G4 knot in there, 24mm. So we'll just put that in my little Uncle Shave soaker. To, um, it doesn't really need to be soaked because it's synthetic, but you do it out of habit anyway. Uh, what else are we using? It's the razor, brush, soap. Okay, we'll move over to the leather station and develop the leather. Okay, we're at the overhead shot here. In my, I've got my sample of sterling soap. You may wonder, it's about 2.6 gram. You may wonder how I measure these. Well, I have one of these uh, micro scales. Mine's a half kilo one that you use for measuring small things like jewelry and that. So I just scrape enough off and as you can see it's 2.64 grams that'll be fine about two and a half is enough if you don't have one then you can get these well you might have these in the kitchen little measuring spoons i've got a quarter teaspoon and a half teaspoon i normally go for a level half teaspoon of soap but some people like to go a bit smaller like a quarter So a half is about two and a half grams and a quarter of course is about half of that. So about one and a quarter, one and a half. So we just squash that down in there. That should be fine. Now, get my wet brush, give it a squeeze, one shake, and then I start with that. You can see it's moist, but not wet. Now this G4 knot has got soft tips, but it's got a fairly firm background. Uh, background it's backbone so we're just trying to make a little paste first now Rod and Mandy uh, the owners of uh, Sterling 
You may wonder where the name Sterling comes from. It actually comes from when they were on holidays in Scotland before they started the company, they were at a, a place near Stirling. And Stirling Bridge, and of course Stirling Bridge is famous for William Wallace's um, famous victory in the first war of the Scots against the uh, English. So we're just adding um, about a half tea, half tea, yeah, a half teaspoon of water at a time. So if you don't have a syringe, you could use the half teaspoon measure to add water. Or you could use a teaspoon at a time, it's really your choice. I like to add smaller amounts. Just let it build up slowly. So that's where the name Sterling came from. And that's where they developed the idea of starting up a soap company. That was um, just over 10 years ago. And the rest is history as far as Sterling is concerned. I won't go into the history. Uh, you want to see that? Um, there's a couple of interviews on YouTube. Uh, I think on um, IMCDB did a couple of interviews with uh, Rod and Mandy. I think there was one earlier this year or last year. And then you get the details there. The other thing is that little tree you see in the logo, that little tree there is actually comes from a picture they took of a tree standing outside of the hotel they were staying in. As you can see, I've gathered up all that soap. I don't think there's any left in the bottom there now. And we're just getting the texture to what I like to see, which is pretty close to it now. As you can see, I pull away, it droops down, which is how I like it. That's how I can tell it's well hydrated, and then. You can probably see that it's very shiny and quite dense. Now I think I can put a just another half teaspoon. So that's 15 mil. This is a 20 mil syringe. That looks plenty. The nice. So it's droopy but not runny. And that's how I like it. Some people like it drier, some people like it wetter. And that's where I'll stop now and I'll use that. Okay, we're all finished with building that ladder. We have a lovely looking leather, as you can see, it's peaky but more soft peaks, which is how I like it. And this is mutton based leather, there's not a lot of difference between the mutton and beef uh, tallow based soap, perhaps just a little bit more performance out of their mutton, but not a lot, not a lot in it.
I do like it though, because it has a nice aftershave feel as well. I'm just re-wetting my face. I already put the Lucky Tiger uh, liquid shave cream um, on as my pre-shave. You may ask, well, why are you using that? Well, I've had it in my cup for years and it's just the way to using it up. You're quite easy to shave, but it's quite a slick soap or cream. Put a little bit of alum on my fingers. Stopping because I've just been handling that slick soap. And I'll just put this on my face. Mmm, it's got pine sheep. A lovely pine scent. With a little bit of um, oak moss to calm down the, the pine a bit. Give it a more earthy pine scent. Well, not earthy, greener. I suppose you couldn't call it greener. Yeah, earthy pine scent. Yeah, so it's got some oak moss in there. Look at that, shiny. Oh, you can see that, but it's, trust me, it's really shiny. Oh, I haven't put that other light on. I'll do that. It's pretty dull outside. It's pretty, so it makes it hard for me to see myself in the mirror. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, it's a nice, nice leather. Right, here we go, first pass. Down the face, or with the gain, uh, with the green, mostly. I don't follow my grain exactly, I just go different directions with the razor. Just a light touch, even though this is an aluminium razor, you don't want to press it. Just let the blade do the work. I've got it on a fairly sharp angle there. But really the best way position is just back from the the head. If you make it a sharper angle, you'll get um, like that. You'll get more, more of the blade. And more narrow angle like that. Closer to nine degrees, you'll get. Let's play field. It's not a strong blade feely. Razor. It's on the mild side of medium, I would call it. Oh, it's lovely. I oh, love it. No, that is really nice and rich. I like the mutton one. Unfortunately, it's um, they were considering stopping it, but uh, hopefully they can keep it going for a bit longer. Because mutton, mutton fat is uh, more, a lot more expensive than beef, beef fat. But I think they're trying to 
source from their own sheep on their farm. Alright. Oh, this is lovely. So if you like a pine scent, this is a nice one. It doesn't smell too much like pine oak clean. happening in the last week or so with regards to the the Queen's um, uh, passing away um, I thought I'd do an English story but not related to the Queen as such back in 1809 the second building of the Royal Opera House in London opened And you may say, what's so significant about that? Well, the first one got burnt down. And the first opera house was built in 1732. And many operas and oratories by George Friedrich Handel were performed there. And it had the name of Convent, Convent Garden. Or well, it's commonly referred to that as that because that's what it was at some stage before it became a theatre. Hands are a bit slippery. I'll just put a little bit of alum, more alum on the fingers. That's better. So there was a fire on the 20th September 9, uh, 1808, which destroyed that original building. Original Opera House. And the one built in 1809 was the replacement, but that's not the current one. We'll go into that a bit later. It's second past done. That's a great time. I'm going pretty quick quick for me. Just putting a bit more water on. I don't rinse off this egg water and move the leftovers around. You can rinse off if you like. Your shape, do it your way. So, what was significant about the one built in 1809? Well, after opening, the, uh, the manager, John Philip Kimball, raised the seat prices to help pay for building the new opera house and the rent, or the land rent applied was also raised. So he raised the seat prices to 
try and recoup all that. However, that was very unpopular. So the audience used to beat sticks and boo and hiss and dance in the aisles to in interrupt the performances. And, and it was called the Old Price Riots. <laughs> and it lasted for over two months before management finally conceded and went back to the original price. shape. I like these Kai blades. You wonder why I'm pulling my, trying to pull my skin down a little bit because I'm very chubby cheeks and so it's very soft. I'm trying to stretch it a little bit. Get to the hairs, so I cut it a little bit closer. And around the mouth, you can see I've got wrinkles in the corners of my mouth. So stretching the edge, I can get to the hairs. the under, under out like a puffer fish Okay, well, that was the second building. <laughs> of course, it was far again in, um, when was it? 5th of March, 1856. The theatre was destroyed by fire again. And um, it was rebuilt in the next year, 1858. And the new building was designed by Edward Milton or Middleton Barry. Let's do a, a pickup pass. I think there was a weeper there. It happens when you're not concentrating, talking too much. Because normally I would shave closer to the mirror and see what I'm doing. All right. So this building is the forms the basis of the current building. And it's gone through two world wars. In the First World War, it was requisitioned by the Ministry of Works to store furniture, would you believe?
and during the Second World War, the theatre became a dance hall. And it nearly remained a dance hall after the war. Except, uh, let me see, the building got, uh, was leased or acquired and leased by the publishers Uzi and Hawks. And David Webster was appointed the general administrator. And the Convent Garden Opera Trust was created and laid the plans for development of uh, performing arts. I'm just riding the cap a bit to uh, catch those last few hairs, but I might just get up under the glass there. Do the same on this side. the lip area. I think there was a weeper here, I don't know. I'll have to check that later. Yeah, might be a little one down here, a little mark. Not too bad. Oh that feels nice. That soap is lovely rich and creamy. Feels really nice on the skin. I really enjoy the mutton tallow based soap from, from Sterling and actually other places like uh, Mitchell's All Fat is quite, I like that one as well. Alright, we'll just rinse off and do a test around. The yellow, sorry, <coughs> I've got a little dry cough. Zip, wipe off. spot down in the crevices down here. I went trying to get a bit closer. So uh, probably three in that spot, maybe two on the upper lip, everywhere else virtually zero. Maybe just a one there. Alright, that's my shave. So before I go and have my shower, there's a whole heap of leftover leather here. And as usual, I'll put that on my face. Look at that, beautiful. Oh, lovely leather. As a face scrub, I'll go and have my shower and come back to the post shave. Okay, we're all back here from the shower. Lovely. Just a couple of minor weepers, nothing to worry about. So we start off with the uh, vanishing witch hazel. Only gone, maybe one shade left. Beautiful. Still smell of menthol, huh? And what else are we gonna do? Uh, we're going with the La 
Lucky Tiger today, Lucky Tiger Vanishing Cream, which is a mentholated eucalyptus aroma, lightly, not a strong one, lightly scented, lightly mentholated, at least it is for me. It's nice. And we won't do a summary today because I think this video is already pretty long. So we'll go straight into Missia Umo Vetipa. Keeping to the green type scent. I don't have any pine scented splashes. This is as close as I can find. But this is a lovely scent anyway. And as I have my shower, before I do this, uh, the other scent's already dissipated anyway. Alright, that's my show for today. We'll catch you on my next one.